Welcome to the Audible. It's a victory yeah. Monday, and it's a playoff Monday for the Miami Dolphins fans. So you know what a playoff Monday means, John? We can do what we want. Well, it means we can do whatever we want, okay. but it means I'm giving Leon's a free pass. Oh, Leon okay. gets a free pass today. I like that, Nothing Bo. that he could do wrong would go wrong. Like when he just counted like me down. starting off the show. You know, he's like five, four, three, and then he stopped, which right. I thought maybe there was something technical. Right. Because we that they, normally happens. People can't hear him technical. here. Only I can hear him. Right. But he decided to stop, so I thought. So. But that was I'm good. not. Like, I like that boat. No, I'm, I'm not going to. Get nice. Leon's Get really getting, he, nice. He's on full Lean scholarship it. today. He can He can do no wrong here this afternoon. John, what, what a game on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it what was. a game on. What was it? Saturday. I can't yeah. remember what day it was. Um, and we were just talking about a little bit off the air. By the way, you're watching the Audible on Periscope. If you want to send some questions in, just hashtag the Audible. Send it in via Twitter. You can see this program on a rebroadcast starting tomorrow on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. But getting back to the game, John, we were talking about. I said, you know, the Dolphins come out, they get up fourteen nothing. You going, hey, this is going to be. You know, the Bills evidently they don't want to play too much. Right. You know, they're just kind of they're turmoil going on there. But all of a sudden they come back and. Uh, we were going back and forth like three times. We held a 14-point lead. And then all of a sudden things got dicey there in the end. And it was, uh, you know, I tell you what, if you if you get in the playoffs, you want to earn your way into the playoffs. And they certainly earned, the Dolphins certainly <laughs> yeah. earned their way into the playoffs on uh, on that game. And thank goodness last night for the, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think everybody in Miami were huge Kansas City Chief fans yesterday for that one. But that, that all works out as Kansas City – knocks Denver out of the playoffs, and the Miami Dolphins are in, and now we just wait to see. It's either going to be Pittsburgh on uh, Sunday or Monday of next week unless something happens and the Dolphins beat New England and Kansas City loses, loses to San Diego. Then, we would, uh, then yeah. the Dolphins would go to Houston. For a weather standpoint, I would prefer to go to Houston. Yeah. No doubt Dome about Stadium. it. Dome uh, Stadium. Yeah. I, I think that would be perfect. You know, yeah. even though, uh, you know, once you're in, it, it doesn't matter. Doesn't you got matter. a shot. But you're right. The, the road through Houston in an indoor environment going to Pittsburgh, compared yeah. to going to Pittsburgh and, and battling the elements, yeah. I think would be something. But you're right. But what a game on Saturday night. The Miami Dolphins, that's two weeks in a row, find a way to win on the road with their backup quarterback, uh, with a bunch of injuries, yeah. with, w- overcoming a bunch of different things. And overcoming a Bills team that looked like they wanted to go away, but they kept coming back. I think they scored in almost every possession in the second half. half. We talked about that before we came on the air. Uh, And then in overtime, the Miami Dolphins found a way to win. They get that huge 50-plus run from JHI down the Miami Dolphins sideline. And then uh, Franks comes in and kicks uh, the game winner in overtime. But it was was dicey. It was back and forth. And it was almost a playoff atmosphere because that's what's going to happen. In the playoffs, yeah. you're going to get in those games where it's going to your possessions are going to start to dwindle down, and it's going to matter what happens in the second half of games. And can you come through? Can you find a way to score? Can you find a way to get off the field? Yeah. Can you do something in special teams that changes the field position for your offense? All those things come into play, and, and everything fell into place after the Dolphins took care of business they, on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, they did. And, and look, even in the game, I, I mean, you know, you go into overtime, and you you know, and, and you you get that opportunity. But fortunate for the Dolphins, they were going in the right direction. Yes. You know, that the wind was behind them <clears throat> because I guarantee you, Andrew Franks has to kick that 54 yard field. They're going for it on fourth goal. down. Going in the other direction, there yeah. is no way. I mean, that, that wind was uh, it was howling going in that direction. Tough way to make it make it go, but uh, they're going in the right direction. Then they go ahead and get uh, they get the ball and uh, you know after stopping the uh, the Buffalo Bills in their first run and they got the win going again. That's right. A couple of pass, get a Jay Ajay going fifty seven yards and you know it's funny you, you look at Jay Ajay and he had those two big rushing yards against first against Buff uh, against uh, Pittsburgh when he had two hundred and four whatever it was and then the week after against Buffalo we had two hundred and fourteen and, and then he and then his numbers went down. We had another hundred the next week and and then went down and all of a sudden. Kind of questions started going out. Well, Jay was that a was that you know was that just a flash in the pan? Is this guy really that good? And all does all he does is come back and go for another two hundred and six yards or two hundred nine, whatever it was in this football game, and really really cement I think the season that he's had as a running back as really being one of the top running backs in the National Football League. And much like the Dolphins, when the Dolphins got in their little win streak going, you know, two games ah, you know that and they'll come back to earth, right. they'll come back to earth. And the Dolphins didn't. They stayed strong. They got the job done. JGI did the same thing with his running game. And uh, boy, it was just uh, 34-31. And it was uh, man, I, I don't think my heart. I don't think my heart <laughs> stopped pumping at a very vigorous Brisk. pace. 
yeah. until we got back here to, <laughs> to, till I went to dinner that night, had a cocktail. Then I kind of calmed eased down. into it. Well, exactly. you're right. We we did the same thing. We were watching in the Channel Four studios, and Sam Madison and I were going back and forth. Hey, what do you think we're going to do here? Do you think our yeah. defense is going to find a way? And just as you said, Jay Ajayi found ways uh, to get it done after maybe a couple four or five weeks where it was kind of yep. mediocre. You know, you have to give credit to that offensive line. I mean, you've got Craig Urbeck now playing center. Yep. This is our third center this Miami Dolphins team has gone through. And for two consecutive weeks, he seems to be doing a job. Yep. And that whole offensive line and the wide receivers blocking downfield have paved the way for J.H.I. To, to do what he's done in the running game. And on the other side of the football – when that winning streak was going at six straight, and then you you know you have a kind of a uh, a flat tire at Baltimore, and then you get back yep. on the winning streak again. Cam Wake has still found a way to get to the quarterback, yep. record a sack, and each one of those victories down the stretch. So led by those two guys, you know, led by him and Adam Sue in the middle, and how about Tony Lippett yes. on the outside oh, yeah. playing so well? You don't even mention his name anymore. So there's a there's a consistency about this team about finding ways to win football games. It's not always uh, Picture perfect. It's not always the way you draw it up on the board, but they find ways to win in all facets of the game. And I think that's what makes this team so fun to watch because you're always sitting on the edge of your seat, not sure who's going to be the guy or the team or the or the unit that comes through and, and pulls this team towards a victory. You know, John, I was watching before the game down in the field watching pregame warm-ups. And I'm watching Brandon Albert with the offensive line going through different things. He would shout out different different calls, different things, and they would go through it. And and, and I and I kind of watched that for a while. I said, "Oh, that's you know, it's, it was interesting watching and watching that dynamic." And then I watched the body language of that offensive line mm-hmm. throughout their warmups and when they were getting ready to walk on the field. And I said it on the on the uh, during the game on the broadcast, I said, "Hey, look, I'm telling you what, I'm looking at Brandon Albert, and he's looking at, and, and he's got the look of saying, "Hey, look, put it on our shoulders." Right. Put this game on our shoulders. We're going to get the job done. So certainly Jay Ajayi gets all the credit in the world for rushing for 206 yards. But that offensive line, believe me, they, they I think they went in that game with the mindset that, hey, I don't care what everyone does. We're going to do what we need to do to get the Dolphins through and win this football game. And I, and I think I've got to give those guys a lot of credit for what they were able to do. And, look, they ran a lot of unbalanced line. They did a lot of different things. But they'd run unbalanced, and then they'd run, run away, away from, from the from it. Right. So they kind of they did a lot. They had a lot of good stuff going on where they kind of kept the Buffalo defense, um, you know, uh, off balance throughout the, the whole football game. Uh, and, and I just thought, look, you, Adam Gaze, give him a credit for for calling another another good game. I know after the game, I asked him about Matt Moore. And he said, well, you know, I I got thing. I didn't give him a, the smooth start he wanted, or whatever. But uh, it, it was just it, it was, you know, what it was great to be in a game in December that really mattered in a huge yeah. way and watch this football team play a game like it mattered and like it meant everything to them and come away with a win. I was so happy for those guys coming off the field, happy for them on the plane, and, and happy for everybody in this coaching staff and this organization and that football team right now. Well, you mentioned late in the season, what do you have to do? You have to be able to run the football and you have yep. to be able to stop the run. Well, the Miami Dolphins – weren't able to stop the run against Buffalo, but they were able to find a way to get off the field when it mattered the most. And that was late in the game and in overtime to be able to make plays offensively and make plays in special teams. And Kenyon Drake did an unbelievable job, not only on the U-turn 45-yard speed run down the Dolphins sideline, but in special teams creating that cushion, you know, getting field position. And that's critical, critical down the stretch in the month of December and when they start playing in the playoffs. Those types of things make up for the two first downs that you don't think about. And you can average, you know, the ball on the 35, 38-yard line instead of him inside your own 20 or 25. You know, look at the running. You talk about Jay. You talk about uh, about Kenyon Drake. About well, Damian Williams Ooh, comes third up with four, that. Oh, third and four, third and three. What, what a, a catch play. and comes, run. So all three of your running backs yes. really contributed in a huge way in, in that football game. And, and it's amazing to me, John, how watching this football team, how it has become – a big play football team on both sides of the ball. That's right. You have to. And that, that's what changes the dynamic of winning or losing. Yep. You can be consistent, but if you don't create explosive plays on both sides of the football and in special teams, you're going to be falling yep. behind because you cannot be that consistent for that long in the National Football League. There's only two or three teams, elite teams, that can sustain that yep. over the course of a regular season, let alone carrying it into the playoffs. And you have to have a special guide quarterback or a special safety or a pass rush 
rushing specialist or a corner that can create turnovers. The Miami Dolphins are doing it, doing it with a bunch of different players yep. in a bunch of different ways, and that's what makes this team so fun to watch. Yep. You're watching the Audible here on uh, on Periscope. You can send your questions in via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can watch us on a delayed broadcast tomorrow on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. Let's go ahead and get some of these questions in. At uh, Nachirio, how confident are you going into the playoffs? Um, I feel good about this football team going to the playoffs, John. I, I look at the look, first of all, they beat Buffalo. That's right. So you got Buffalo. You, 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 you've already beat, I mean, Pittsburgh. You beat Pittsburgh, so that's already one notch in your belt. You see what you do against New England this week because who knows – you know how th- things play out. Yes. Who you may run across. Houston, certainly, I, you know, you feel confident if you're going to Houston to play a football game against that Houston Texan football team. And, and I really don't think there's anybody out there beyond New England, if New England's playing the way New England does, that you say, wow, that, that's going to be a tough one to get the job done against. But I think it's pretty wide open. Now, the, now the issue for the Dolphins is coming as a wild card, if you want to get to the big game. On the road. you, you got to win three and you got to win them on the road. That's it's right. Not, it's not going, to be, not going to be easy. So that's the obstacle. Not saying it's something, but I, I think this football team, having won nine of their last ten games, should be as confident as anybody going in the National Football League right now. Well, you take a look at who's left, and you know the Miami Dolphins match up pretty well against everybody. Yep. But there's a reason why you're going on the road. There's a reason why you're in a wild card situation. Uh, I I think right now the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots are playing really mm-hmm. good football. And you take a look at Kansas City. If they're home, they've got a way, a certain way that they play. I think the unpredictability of the of the playoffs are teams like the Miami Dolphins because they can come out and run for 100 plus, even sometimes 200 yeah. plus, or you can rely on the passing game and Matt Moore, or if Ryan Tannehill happens to come back in the playoffs. I think the yeah. Dolphins, the way they can be successful in the playoffs is worrying about themselves, yeah. and not so much worrying about the matchup because they're all yeah, good absolutely. teams right now. Yeah, no, no, Everybody's going to be a good team. If you can protect the football and not turn it over, if you can get it, a couple of turnovers yeah. and win field position, you've got a chance in the second half of, that, of whoever you play. Their, their mindset should be exactly what their mindset has been every game that they've played this year. One, Worry about no. this one game. Do whatever you need to do to win this game, and then we move on from here. Uh, at Phil Hernandez, what's our approach against the Patriots? I think the approach being, do you play everybody? Do you not? Um, I, I just, you know what? I, I just having having gotten to know Adam Gaze uh, and what he's done, I just think they're going to go out and play this game as if it's it's any other game. And you need this game to get in the playoffs as much as you did the game against Buffalo. I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to take their foot off the pedal. I don't think they're going to change anything. I don't think he's going to be sitting people. Maybe somewhere along the way, depending on how that game goes. But look, New England needs this game for the, to get to, to get home field advantage. Well, look what throughout. happened to them last well, look year. Look what happened to them. And believe me, I guarantee you, Bill Belichick and those guys are talking about. Hey, remember last year we went down to Miami, didn't win that football game, and Denver, Denver, we have to go into Denver. We get bumped out of the uh, of a shot to go to the Super Bowl. That's right. And and so yeah, that certainly <clears> is going to be in their mind. So, but I think the Dolphins have to go in and play. Look. I don't think the Dolphins are a football team right now that has the privilege or has the uh, luxury uh, the luxury of just saying, ah, we won't play this game. Because I, I just don't believe in that turn it off. The switch is back. on right yeah. now. You keep, keep it on, on and, and you keep, keep going. going. Yeah. And I, I agree with you, Bo. I don't think the Dolphins are going to be resting any players. If you're healthy and you can play, yep. you're going to contribute and try to win and be 1-0 this Sunday <laughs> at home at Hard Rock Stadium. Yep. At uh, Finns Fan Joshua, do we get Jelani healthy for the playoffs? I don't think so. Look, this guy hasn't been healthy all year long, and 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 look, I, I love the guy as a player, but to, but but one of the shortcomings or one of the faults I've got with him, he, he doesn't know when to stay out. He, he's such a tough, hard nosed guy. He come back, comes back and tries to play. Did it last year, yeah. and just so he so he has nagging injuries that never get better for him. And look, I mean, I credit him for being that kind of player, but I think the downside is I don't think he's really healthy, and I don't know that he'll he'll be healthy. Uh, no matter how far the Dolphins go in this thing. You're right. There's a number of players like that. You can yep. go back and look at Cole Misi. Look yep. at, you know, it's, it's really at the linebacker spot where yes. you have those types of injuries. And now you have to hope that uh, you know, Issa abdul Kadus is yes. going to be able to come back and play because it seems like down the middle, you look at quarterback, you look at center, you look at linebacker, you look at safety. Yep. The Miami Dolphins have had the
the bulk of their injuries down yeah. the middle of their football team. And you have to be able to make up for that somewhere. Yeah. And, you, you know, you point to uh, Jelani as one of those guys. Now you have to look behind him and you hope that uh, yeah. Abdul Kadus can come back and give you something, if not in the last game, yeah. be able to be healthy for the you know week one of the playoffs. Yeah, no no doubt about it. And, and, and you look at no, – now, Kadus may be a guy you don't play because, because – so of you that get him situation. ready for the next week. Right. But look, Michael Thomas stepped in, did a pretty good job. He did. Uh, during this game when uh, when he had the opportunity to step in. Uh, all right, uh, at uh, at uh, 058 Ronald Edward, uh, shouldn't us beating Pittsburgh and running the ball so well give us a lot of confidence? I, I, I look – you you beat you beat them thirty to fifteen in October sixteenth. Uh, you, you beat them soundly. Yes. It wasn't it wasn't a game that uh, you know you, you that 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 um, uh, there was a that, that you got that you lucked into. They went out they out physical Pittsburgh. They played a good football team. I think that in itself gives you some confidence. But look, you're going to go up to Pittsburgh. That field's going to be a mess. Is it always there's, there's going to be no Steeler defenders puking on the goal line no, up in Pittsburgh? No, you know, no. The, the whole dynamic of the yeah. game changes. Give credit to the Miami Dolphins, they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers soundly at home yes. in the month of October. It's a different animal in the month of January, it's a different team. They've got momentum built on their side yep. since that loss, you know, that 15 point loss. So they're a different football team. You have to worry about yourself. You yep. have to go up, try to get as healthy as you can, win this game at home at New England. doesn't matter in the stat sheet. doesn't matter really for your overall record. But if you have to go to Pittsburgh, you better worry about what you do well yep. and, and protecting the football and being good and being sound against the run because Le'Veon Bell and, and Ben Roethlisberger are very good elite players in this league. The one thing you know going in is you're confident because you're a playoff football team. That's right. You are, you're, not, you're not one of the other guys. You're a playoff football team. And, John, to me, this goes a long way – even looking towards 2017, I love a football team that gets to the playoffs for the first time and comes back, and they come back to training camp. You come back at a different level. Yeah. You, you're, you're not these guys down here fishing. Now, you're one of those playoff teams. You're one of six teams in the AFC that made it to the postseason. And, and now I, I think this football team, the way they're constructed with the coaching staff, they can come back with some swagger and build on that next year. So they've got confidence. I think they've got confidence going in, A, because the way they played against Pittsburgh, but B, because they're a playoff football team and they want to show people it's the real deal. Well, but when was the last time that this team had the luxury of building on something? Yeah, no, you know, right. a, a playoff team yep. or, or a coaching staff that figures out – Here's the guys I have, and here's what I need to do to motivate yep. them and make it work. And there's a lot of positives yep. that this group can build on with a core of players that are going to be coming yep. back. Uh, but there's a lot that they can continue to build on this week and the week after because that's the way this team is being coached now. It's not, uh, you know, you worry about next year, next year. Yep. You worry about this week, this week. And yep. that that's where I think this this team doesn't have the luxury of looking forward. Yep. They have to focus in on the, on the New England Patriots and worry about – they're off day tomorrow. Worry about Wednesday on Wednesday yep. and take it one day at a time. Yep. Yep. No, no doubt about it. Hey, uh, you're watching the Audible here. If you're watching, it's a victory Monday for the Miami Dolphins as they get their, uh, their uh, ticket punch to go to the playoffs here thanks to Kansas City winning last night and the Miami Dolphins doing what they had to do up in Buffalo on Saturday. If you're watching us on Periscope, you can send your questions in. Just hashtag the Audible on Twitter. You can watch us on the Miami Dolphins uh, Facebook page starting tomorrow on a rebroadcast and the MiamiDolphins.com. Um, Na at Nathan and Megan's mom, how far do you think we can go in the playoffs? You, you know, the playoffs are a funny thing, John. Once you get, you know, it, 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 it's become cliche, but once you get in, you never know. You never know what happens. Win one game, boom, then you're sitting there and who knows where you're at. Get a loss, win here, a loss there. Next thing you know, you're sitting there and, you know, it doesn't take long to get there. It's only a three-game series before to, to get you into a, um, into a, into a Super Bowl. So, um most How far can we go? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what this team, how this team plays. But all I know is they're in, and they got a chance to go. And a chance to see far, how far they go, and we'll we'll see how far yeah. they will go. And there's no backing in. You know, this no. team is hot. This team yeah, has yeah, played yeah. well. And no matter who's been on the schedule, uh, you got to play them. You got to try to win those games and yeah. move on. And this team has found a way to do that over the last ten weeks. Well, and, and you know, I look, I look John, and, and you, you know, it, people are nitpick will, will nitpick on certain things and this and that. But this team's beat some very physical football teams by playing physical football right. themselves. They beat a good Pittsburgh football team that's obviously going to the playoffs. They swept the Bills. Which they haven't done. Which they haven't the last done time the they Jets and the Bills? Jets and the Bills sweep right. the Jets and Bills and, and, and played very tough physical games. All I, I just think you know. This, look, we're, we're seeing a new Miami Dolphin football team now. 
So what can they do? I don't know. We'll find out. Hopefully we'll be surprised and see this football team uh, spend a little extra time here uh, uh, playing throughout the rest of the season. At Flynnburn 1, Bo, the Cup of Joe was late on Saturday. Did you and Joe close the anchor bar <laughs> again? <clears throat> no, we didn't close the anchor bar. We did go out. Did you have a, we guys did drink have a, a good time? Wine. We had a good time. Nice. Uh, we told stupid stories. Again. We made asses of ourselves, <laughs> like we usually do, and did all those things. But uh, look, here goes Buffalo. We had a good time. Yeah, well, there's not a whole lot you can do. No, what are you going to no. do? Eat, eat wings, maybe drink some beers or wine, and, and, you know, it's funny, and tell John, a story. It was funny because, you know, the Dolphins, with, with the, the way the Dolphins have been going the last decade or so, usually at that point of the season, it's like, hey, let's just get this thing over with and move on. Awful feeling. There was such an excitement around that football team, on that tr- such an excitement about that trip. You could see it in the players. You could see it in the coaches. You could see it in everybody around that football team. Know how much, how meaningful that football game was going to be for them. And, and you could see it. We, we, we went to dinner. We went to a steakhouse in, in Buffalo. Offensive line, all there is a group. Nice. Defensive line there, all together is a group. Wide receivers, all there is a group. You know, just being tight, talking about what needs to be done. And I saw those guys all there, and I said, you know what? Felt good, right? Felt really good about it. Yeah about what this team was doing and where they were at. So we skipped the anchor bar. Um, look at our wings at Bo Campers. <laughs> at Scooby-Doo, fin- at Scooby Fins Up. Neon Leon, we made it, homie. Did Bo give you guys a haircut for Christmas like he promised? I'm still ready to pay. What happened? I'm Wait, still ready to pay. You guys let me in on this. They, they think, they, well, they him and Trey. So Leon and Trey. Trey, Trey Dizzle. S- let me put it this way. Somebody didn't charge up the, the computer the other day. Oh, I read about so this. I read show, about this. Show, That's I'm not right. naming names, Leon, but yeah. in the middle of the show, it it, it it was stopping. Done. So Trey had to come in. And somebody got on camera. So Trey got on camera. Yeah. And I noticed while Trey was here, he had his, his line. Well, it's the receipt. It's a little. Yeah, it's going it's little, back. Well, it's not it's, quite. It's not quite LeBron-ish. Well, it's not first and ten. It's second it's and thirteen. It's crooked. Yeah, it's not supposed it, to be straight. So you got it. So you got him to straighten it out. Well, I told him he needs to straighten it out. You know, because it looks rough. Right. I told you, it looks like a jigsaw. Well, I saw him, Bo. I saw him at a Christmas party. Leon's, he looked pretty good the I other night. I noticed Leon's wasn't any better. Well, I mean, he doesn't have a mirror So I either. said, look, I'll, I'll pay for a haircut for you guys if you need. But when, when they take it up, when they take me up on it, I'll pay Carl's for it. Carl's Barbershop. I, I have coupons That's all. There. Hey, get him no, a coupon. no doubt about it. I got, I got a friend of mine that owns, you know, I forget what the name of it is, but he owns a little barbershop for kids. Yeah. So they can go in there where they sit like on a horse. Well, they can they can you, booster club them. You, well, no, you there. sit on like they have like a little horse, you know. So you sit on a horse and, <laughs> and you get your hair cut. And, and <laughs> they need some help. You're right, Paul. All right, let's go. Uh, so yeah, Joe was late anyway. Got that Leon's done. Okay, at Bull sixty six. Does making the playoffs make Gase a good candidate for coach of the year? Well, I think he was a good candidate for Before coach of the year it. prior to that. But yeah. I, I think certainly when you look at coach coaches and the job they've done this year. Hard for me not to see this guy being right at the top of that list. He's done I mean, such still, a good job. Especially when you saw not so much their record at one and four, but how poorly that team was playing yeah. at one. Remember how they just they couldn't get a first down. Three Third and down out, was punt, awful. Punt, punt. Third yeah. downs were horrendous. And to turn it around and 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 to get to where they're at right now, I, I don't see how this guy isn't at the top of the list or, or certainly right there. Whatever he's done. Yeah, with his part as as head coach of the Miami Dolphins has been really good. Yes, I mean whatever buttons he's pushed, however he motivates this team, maybe he's he relates to them so well yep. that every week when they get in that team meeting, he sets a plan, and these guys believe it. These guys take it to heart, and they go out and try to execute it. And they don't wait for Sunday to do it. Yep. They do it that day, and then the, the first day of practice, and they're off day, and they're in film study, and the way they take their attitude to the practice field, and the way that they go and work on their own craft in the in the film room. Yep. You know, there's a lot of things that, that he can do. Uh, he can say, but they don't have to really yep. execute. These guys are hearing the message and I think they're following through on yeah. the message, and and that's what a, a good coach does. I, I would add to that coach of the year the fact that you know what, every one of these assistant coaches should get a great. I mean, should get a lot of respect for what yeah. they did with these guys. All the injuries they've had, and you've watched the Tony Lippets come in yeah. and get better all year long. That's right. You watch Byron Maxwell, who struggled early in the year, get better. Does Damian Does Williams look like a different player Damian every Williams. time he gets look, in the what game? About, what Kenyon about Kenyon Drake? Look at how much Spencer Pacinger yeah. and Neville, Neville Hewitt, Hewitt played, and Mike Hull, and how well they played. That all goes back to the assistant coaches yeah. getting them ready. So I'm with you on Adam Gaze. 
I'm also with you on all the other coaches and the job they've done with this football team because it's been it's been a very it's been a very enjoyable thing to watch from the inside. Twitter, Bo, what's Canoe's status with his neck? Um, don't know. I, I don't don't know. Don't know what that. But my thought my thought would be again. This is just my opinion. Sit him out this game. Get him ready for the uh, for the playoff game, uh, and let, let Michael Thomas uh, uh, handle the duties back there. We're gonna and, know and, much more. And Walt Akins, let them take care of that safety. I position. agree with you. We'll know much more on Wednesday about yes. a lot of these guys and yeah. Thursday. But I, I would think that he's probably the worse off. Yes. of any of those guys. He took a shot, man. He he took a shot. Yeah, he did. On right on the goal line. Right, right on the goal tried line. to stand up Charles Clay, and Charles Clay's not a small yep. dude. Yep. And he bounced right off of him, and you hope that he's okay. Yep. Uh, at B great. What are the or what are your thoughts on Tannehill returning this season, man? I, I I've got really really mixed emotions on that. I mean, look, <clears throat> if Ryan Tannehill's in a situation now where he doesn't need surgery, and that seems to be the common thought that he doesn't need surgery, he's got a partial tear, whatever this or that, I, I wouldn't bring him back this season myself. I, I wouldn't do it. I, I just wouldn't do it because I'm I'm concerned about re-injuring that thing, yeah. making it worse, having to go under the knife. Then going under all the rehab that uh, that you deal with, especially if it's an ACL type of situation, uh, that's just me being cautious and looking forward to next year. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's that's my opinion. My understanding is, you know, if you have a tear in the ACL, those are the types of injuries that don't grow back. I mean, yeah. you have to be able to go in and have surgery to repair it. So it depends on the severity for, but, for but, me. But, but from what I understand, he's got that MCL is where he's got it pulled away from the bone. At least that's what the, what the word going out is there. And, and look, anytime you've got instability in your knee, it's not I, a good I, thing. I, it's not a good thing. And, and look, typically you have that injury at best. At best, to me, that type of injury is a four to six week. Um, and he would just be on the on the early part of that early, if early he part, ended up playing yes, in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah. So we'll, we'll look. We'll have to see. I, I'm you know I, I'm. He's a young guy. He's a strong kid. He's he's tough, also based my thought on tough minded. Uh, I'll also base my thought on, what, on the way they handle Mike Pouncey. Yeah. Mike probably could Mike probably would have been able to come back and play here late in the season going to the postseason. But I think Gase is more concerned about his career long term. And so that tends to tends that's why Mike thinking tends to, to lean the same way with Ryan. Let's just let him let him get healthy. I think the jury's still out on yeah. Ryan. I, I yep. think. All right, uh let me see. Uh at Leon E. Big. That's got to be our guy. That's got to be. Got to be. Would you guy. agree the major difference this year has been our ability to not beat ourselves? Um, yeah, but I look, this 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 team's punched themselves. They, they've stepped on their toe. They've been able to overcome times, it. But they've been able to overcome it. I think that's the difference is when they get themselves in a situation much like this in Buffalo. Three look, times we had the lead, four, three, three points. Three times, yeah. But, but to lose the lead late in that football game, I think there was, what, a buck 29 yeah. left? Yeah. When, after F when they when That's they right. when they scored and to come back take the ball down the field kick a 55 yard field goal you know that's that's um we haven't seen that in a long time from this football team I'm just glad the Buffalo Bills can't count they can only count to 10 yeah. <laughs> uh, in key situations that's exactly. a good thing for us uh Twitter don't we need to play play tighter coverage pass receivers to stop Brady from those in one step yeah look you, you got to play tight coverage you got to try to get him early because that ball is going to be coming out of the pocket quickly. I don't know how long Brady is going to play. May play the whole game. May play a little bit. May play not play at all. Not not play at all. We'll have to see what they're going to do. But going into that football game, uh, I think you got to play a little tighter coverage. I mean, you got to try to jam at the line of scrimmage because he's going to get that ball out quickly. It's not going to be quickly. what we saw last year. The, no. the New England Patriots threw the football twice in the first yeah. half. They ran the football. Uh, I don't know how many consecutive times in yep. the first two quarters. And I think they came in with the game plan, well, we can win in the le in the next two quarters. Yep. We can just keep it close. Yep. I, I think they're going to come and, and play to win because they know how much home field beat them last yes. year. The home field advantage was not in their favor. Had to go on the road. They lost that football game. They don't get to you know where they want to yep. be. I, I think it's going to be – a game that, you know, Brady's going to protect himself and they're going to try to do that yep. scheme-wise, but I still think they're going to be much more aggressive than they were in this situation last year. My man El Chapo Jr., what matchups do you like against the Patriots? I like our receivers against the Patriots. <clears throat> I, I just think that, that the passing game is there. I think with Matt Moore back there throwing the football, uh, he's confident now after two games in what these guys can do. They've kind of caught they've, – they've had their time to, to time up a little bit. Um and I add to that the tight ends, what the yeah. tight ends have been doing for this football team. Uh, certainly you want to try to run the football. You want to have success doing that. Uh, but but the matchup I like is our receivers 
against their DBs. I like our defensive line going yep. up against that offensive line as well. I, I think we can put pressure on the pocket. Yep. And I, I think that's one thing that the Dolphins historically have been able to do over the past eight to ten years. When New England travels to yes. Miami, it seems like Cam Wake's always around the cornerback. It always seemed like Jason Taylor was always around the quarterback. I think Adama and Sue can be around the quarterback. Yep. I think I think pressure on Tom Brady in South Florida is much different than when the Dolphins travel up north. So yeah. I think that's a, an advantage for the Miami Dolphins as well. Got a well. Twitter question here. Can Rashad Jones come back from the playoffs? I believe he's on IR, right? Yeah, he's, he's not out. coming back. Can't come back. I don't know healthy wise, health wise, if because he had surgery on that shoulder, and that's a long, yeah. that's a long rehab. He he would whether he was he he wouldn't be healthy enough to play. Last time that we swept the Bills and the Jets back in 2003. At Jet Q, hey Bo, I think Andre Brandt deserves a Pro Bowl mention. What do you think? I think he's played great for this football. Unbelievable. I think, he, you know what? You talk about fines during this offseason. Here's a guy that they signed that kind of just came in under the radar. No one even paid him any mind. And all he's done has been as solid as you could ask for a guy to come in. He's only he's in his fifth year. You know, I, I think if it's me, I'd try to give him a long-term Absolutely. contract. Get him signed up because he's, 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 a, he's a, you know. He can, do, he can play everywhere. He can play everywhere. He's one of the guys that's committed to playing well. Uh, I, I love the kid. I, I love the kid in his football team. And he's relentless. Yep. He's got speed off the edge. He can bull rush you. He can yep. speed rush you. He can play the run on the and inside. And he's a great compliment to the other side of Cam Absolutely. Wake, you know, where, and he's a good teammate. Yes, no doubt about it. Uh, at Black Man Game, what's that? Can our defense hold up in the playoffs with all the injuries? Hey, look, you know what? Everybody's hurt in this league. Everybody going in the playoffs has got injury problems that they're going to deal with. They're going to have to hold up in the playoffs if they're going to win a game. Got to stop the run. On. They got to stop the run. I mean, you look at this game. Look, the Bills game's a great example. Look at it. They gave up 589 yards to the Bills and still won a football game. Yeah. So you talk about if that's not resilient, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> that's what's tough resilient. to do. 272 yards rushing for the Bills. Yeah, they've got to be better mm-hmm. than that. They, they they can't they can't their defense can't be as porous as as they were on as they Saturday. Were on Saturday. Get the job done. Last question at, at uh, Tanner uh, Shane. Uh, do you think we can get the fifth seed? It's going to be tough. Fifth seed. Um, Got to win. The, the Dolphins have to beat New England. San Diego. And Kansas City has to lose to San Diego. Yeah. Um, I know I was talking to some of the guys back there and Jeff saying, well, you know, it's it's the last game. In San, maybe the last game in San Diego. Yeah, that, I thought they we played that, that last, last year. year. I think it's going to become an annual thing. The last game in San Diego. You know, this is going to last game in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. All where right, where did Jeff come up with that? We're picking at straws, man. You know how it is. You're digging at every straw you can. <laughs> man, you know? we're going, hey, how can we get – how can we, we do this, this how angle? Can we get in there? Let's get this well, angle We can in. get Houston. Yeah. And then we can go to Oakland because they don't have a starting quarterback. And next you know, hey, we're in a we're championship in a Super Bowl. game. You know, championship game ready right. to go. So that's that's where we're at right now. Hey, yeah, look, it's been uh, – congratulations to this football team. Yeah. Congratulations to this coaching staff. Congratulations to the people in the front office that have put this team together and, and given them the support they've needed. Dolphins finally get back to the playoffs. It's a great situation. I know every Dolphin fan down here in South Florida and those of you that are watching, wherever you're at uh, around our country and around the world, very excited about as are we. So, uh, man, it, it feels great to know that you're a playoff football team. But got one more game to go. That's right. In the regular season. New England, take care of that, and then we'll let the chips fall where they may. John, always Thanks, a pleasure buddy. to have me with you. Have you yeah. me, man? Good job. I don't think I even introduced you no, at okay. the beginning of the show. Leon will get it out there. Leon will the get show. it out there. But everyone knows on Monday, it's a John Jimmy day here on the Audible. All right, we'll catch you on Wednesday. We'll be back at 4.30. Little more, know a little bit more about the condition of the football team injury-wise and whatnot at that point, and we'll, we'll bring it all to you then. Until then, have a good couple of days, and we'll see you.